Okay, great. So now that this is recording, um, just to start out, um, Sean, and you're an amazing actor, and one of my favorite characters in Lord of Rings, both in the books and the movies, is your character, Sam. So I definitely want to open up a conversation about that, and like, you told me a little more about how you actually got the role. Like, did you expect to play Sam, and what that was like to get into character? Well, I was talking about this yesterday at our um, at the panel, which is kind of an intimate panel because it's not a big con, so there's probably like, I don't know 75 people there, and it was like a really good two hour. It was almost like a therapy session. <laughs> um, but I was talking about how my I, Peter Jackson and Fran Walsh's writing producing partner and father of their children, um, knew who I was because he had cast my father in a previous movie of his, in The Frighteners. So I knew that, the, and they called me one day to tell me how much they liked this other movie that I did called Rudy from New Zealand during Frighteners years before. So when it came time to audition, I thought, at least I know that the people who are going to watch it like me and they like my acting, so that made it feel a little bit more comfortable. And then it was kind of a traditional process, and when I got the part, it was uh, I knew that I knew that uh, I was going to have an opportunity to do something important, and that's always good when you feel like your life and your your sense of purpose and mission kind of line up behind what you're doing, and that's what happened when I got cast in that part. That's great. And what was it like? Like, how much knowledge do you have about Middle Earth and Tolkien's world before the role versus after the role? Well. I don't know if nanotechnology, like, if there's none, if you have, like, no knowledge, what's less than that? <laughs> that's, so you had no what, idea what it was? I had, like, to the, the negative power, no, I'd never even heard of it. Oh, wow. I had gotten a degree in literature, mm -hmm. uh, American literature, mm -hmm. so I wasn't, I, for some reason, just never been exposed to even the Hobbit. And, um, but I did understand how to uh, appreciate, you know, and, and in kind of an analytical way, unpack the themes, the nature of good and evil. And one of the things about um, Tolkien's writing that's so powerful is that he puts, um, and I guess the, the Bible does too, or, or you know, some of the big, some of the big texts. They, the most important people are the most fragile, and the and when the world is saved, it's saved for the you know the meek. The, the agrarian people who aren't fighters. So I, I understood pretty quickly reading the books that that Samwise was an emblem of, of the importance of that truth. So and then obviously I read it several not obviously but I read it several times doing the movies, doing during the, the filming and um, you know I, I even learned a lot looking at all the different illustrations, the different you know John Howe and, and Alan Lee are two of the m most well known. Tolkien illustrators, but there's so many people who interpret the work. I actually learned a lot from fandom. After the movies came out and I started doing conventions in like 2002, people would come up and, and give me, you know, fan art, drawings, poetry, sculpture, like there's just so many ways for people to express themselves and they would give it to me. And I actually started to look tattoos, seeing how people would adorn their bodies with ideas from it and, and language from it. and um, so that, so I, you, I think you're always learning, and I have some defect that when I read something, I somehow feel that I'm reading it for the first time. You know, I have friends who read the book once a year, and uh, and they cry in the same spots every time, and they and there's something about the familiarity of it and the the kind of reliability of that experience that they love. Every time I open it, you know, if I'm going to do a charity thing where I read a chapter from the books, I think to myself with every page, like, well, I don't remember this. Like, why don't I remember this? Why is it all new? Like, what's wrong with my brain that things go in, I understand it, and then whoosh, they're kind of gone. So um, I guess I'll chalk it up to a perpetual sense of discovery. I think that's the or, best books are like that, I believe. Really? Like the best books, if you read them many, many times, you keep finding something new about it when you read it. Or at least what's happened with yeah. me, too. I'm talking like, major plot points. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Well, what's an orc? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. No, but so you've read, you know, during your filming, you're reading the books and all that, but what was the most challenging part of Sam's role? Or was it just easy to, to actually fulfill the character? No, the hardest thing was just the, um, the, sh the, 
the shooting schedule. You know, we were we would shoot for 16, 17, 18 hours in a day, and we get a few hours sleep and go back and do it again. And something about Sam carrying the backpack and the way the feet, they brought challenges, like how you're wearing the feet and the ears and the hair. So you're every single day you're putting on glue and then at the end of the day you're taking it off with alcohol and that's all fine and good. But at a day like 190, you know, it sort of starts to, you start to get a little bit, um, you, you know, your psychological integrity is, is uh, tested. And, um, and also Sam Wise is fat. And he's strong too. So in some of the movies, if you look at it, you can be like, "Oh, look, Sam is kind of like the strong version of Sam." And then other times, it's like, "Oh, there's the stupid fat Hobbit that Gollum is teasing." And you know, uh, so it was. I had just run the LA Marathon before I got cast. I was like 160 pounds, and it was great. I was so fit, skinny, abs, like six pack. And then, in order to prove to Peter Jackson that I could do it. I started lifting weights and eating food and like bulking up and getting fat, and then the, you could never stop that though for two years. There was no, you know, my my weight, and therefore my like, you know, general state of wellness and happiness goes up and down, usually in three to four month cycles. I have never figured out how to be like stable or or you know have balance balance Sean and balance are like the yin and yang of reality and uh, so I couldn't do that when I would you know I was up near 200 pounds and I really at a certain point after three or four months I wanted to start running but you can't because I had to be that character so the hardest thing was to maintain that uncomfortable Thing for a long period of time. That was the hard time. And were you also running marathons between the films? Then it was three different films. We filmed them all as one movie. It was one big experience. But on October 28, 2000, I decided after this big earthquake in the South Island that I had done my job and I could start running. And I wouldn't, even if I lost the maximum amount of weight you can lose. Uh, by the time we finished in December, I would still look within the, the range of what I was supposed to look. So I got a treadmill and I put it next to my bed. And every morning I would wake up and I would do an hour on the treadmill as hard and you know as hard as I could. And then after it, I lost so much weight so fast. So and that I was so happy not to be fat anymore. <laughs> At 46, it's harder now. Oh no. Harder. So, so you're not going to take on a role of the Hobbit again anytime soon? <laughs> well, I could take it right now, but I'm like, I would, I don't know, I don't know. I really like, I want to get, I want to get skinny, it's hard now, but I want to find something to do that's it. But, but, uh, but for Lord of the Rings, you know, and I had my wife and daughter with me the whole time, so it was really a gift to be able to give them that experience of traveling all over New Zealand for two years and the kind of family camaraderie that we had and... And you know, and the, you're working with people who are so gifted in every area of the production, the costumers and the props, and like everything was the best. So you know, that's that's pretty lucky. Yeah, I definitely remember watching those films with my mom when I was little, and I was so blown away. Like yeah. everything looked so real, and it was just like I remember reading the books when I was even younger and like seeing it on the screen. It was amazing. Yeah. And actually, personally, I actually prefer the movies over the books. I know a lot of people really? would disagree, but I just felt like I think part of it was just I love the soundtrack. So yeah. like the music, and yeah. the costumes, like, everything. Just I learned together. today some people make it their ringtone. <laughs> That's true. Well, my friends has that as a ringtone. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had the soundtrack. Actually, I bought the soundtrack for from three movies. And I love it. I love two. it. But for sure. I mean, from obviously it's a great experience, but if you could pick just one aspect of filming Lord of the Rings, um, being part of that experience, what would be your favorite part of it? Like something specific. Well, I loved the helicopters. There were a lot of weeks where we went to work every day in helicopters. So That's we'd so show cool. up at four in the morning and we'd be getting our feet on and getting your ears in the air. And like, I remember one day Peter Jackson was like on the floor asleep in the hallway of this space that we were in. And uh, and then you hear, wah, 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 and, and Peter kind of wakes up and was like, oh, our ride is here. And we go and we get in the helicopters and we go shoot on the tops of these mountains. So there's something just so like sexy about that. Um, I mean, I should say, you know, having my wife and daughter there, or the familial thing, like I was talking about yes. before, but the helicopter is pretty great. That's awesome. That yeah. sounds like a really great way to travel. Like, yeah, it's it like is. a glamorous you, I mean, you, you know, helicopter. when you land somewhere that no other human beings on Earth have ever been where you are. 
Yeah, okay, cool. And of course, getting your costumes on and all that too, and then just like hobbits hopping out of the helicopter. Well, I wouldn't get in the ho a helicopter without a pocket mm -hmm. knife and a lighter. <laughs> now there was nothing living that you could kill and eat, mm -hmm. but maybe we could have made a like a campfire because like if you had to get evacuated yeah. off the mountain because of weather, you know. Yeah. So and everyone's like, Sean, you don't need a knife and a thing. I'm like, I'm not getting on that helicopter unless I have a pocket. Like, and this was before. Amazing Race and well, mm. Survivor. It was before Survivor yeah. was on TV. <laughs> so I was like, I got there first. So nice. So you were the one who started it. <laughs> I think they all survival. looked to me for inspiration to survive. Mm. Yes, to get into the tribal councils. Wow. Yeah. And did you have a favorite film? Like after the films were all done, you're watching them. Did you have one that stuck out to you as your favorite? And well, I have like sequences that were my favorite sequences from each one. So I don't know that I had. I mean, the third one, Sam, it really kind of comes alive, you know, fighting Shelob and really, you know, carrying Frodo up the mountain. So from a kind of a selfish perspective as an actor, that, you know, I, I love that part. When I'm watching with my kids, like, I love it when they see the third film. But, like, the first one, when we fight the cave troll, yeah. it's the first time when we were all together where it really felt like we were a team. You know, the director came in, we had all the actors, all our stunt doubles, all our photo doubles, you know, the camera people, and Peter Jackson acted out the entire sequence, oh, wow. playing all the parts, including the cave troll. He was so good at that as a cave troll. And then we we each broke off and we learned our kind of stunts, and then we went through where we were filming it, and by the end of it, and they actually showed us a little bit of it, kind of, you know, a few weeks later, a few months later, which was like, wow, it looks so good, you know, it looks so real. We, you do something and you don't necessarily know how it's going to turn out. And, and so that was one of my favorite things. I always love Haldir coming to, um, to Helm's Deep. Mm -hmm. To honor the, you know, we've come to honor the Alliance of Elves and Men. Like, I always cry at that part. I cried that part, too. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. When uh, Vigo says, oh, my friends, you bow to no one, that always makes me cry, you know. So there's there's so much. There's so much. I don't know. The whole thing. Of course. Every second. Mm -hmm. And also the scene, there wasn't a second. the scene you mentioned that when you always love having everyone see that scene when you're carrying Frodo in that third movie, that's also a scene that makes me cry a lot. Yeah. And my mom gets very emotional in that scene, yeah. too. Yeah. It's just there's remember the Shire. Yeah. It'll be springtime soon, and the birds yeah. will be nesting in the hazel thickets, and yeah. they'll be eating the first of the yeah. strawberries and cream. That was like, that was so much fun to do. It was so because a lot of days on that show, I didn't have any dialogue, yeah. and I go to work that day, and I'm like, oh my god, I get to do these great, this great speech. And I kept, we would always run lines with each other, and I kept asking Elijah to run lines with me, and even like. You know, four or five times, and then you kind of have it. And like, can we do it again? Sure. Now you're like, you own it. It's perfect. But I wanted to keep doing it again because what happens is you film it, and then it's over. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted it. To, I wanted to keep reliving it. So I, he was like, Sean, we did it. You got it. What are you doing? So I love that. That was a really great thing to participate in because it just unlocked that you know that sense of home and that um, yeah that that need to be in touch with like where you come from who you are that sense of identity like yeah that was all <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and like with is your favorite character Sam by the way or did you have a different favorite character from the oh um Lord of the Rings Sam is a pretty great character. I, I think Sam might be my favorite character, but, but I love uh, Treebeard. Mm -hmm. Like, I love the industrialism, kind of, you know, environmental treatise that is Sam, that is a, 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 a Treebeard's, you know, and, and they remind me of my dad a lot, the, the Ents, when they get together and they're having their conference and they talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. My dad's kind of like that when we were raised and we'd always lecture us, you know, and he, you're like, Dad, don't just, like, beat me and then let me go do what I'm going to do. This long kind of conversations about anything, I, I was not very patient, so so I kind of liked the, those deliberations. And then... Um, Gollum is pretty spectacular. I love Gollum too. Yeah, his, the duality, the, the kind of, just what it says about, just the kind of philosophical representation of like karma, I guess. Like if you treat, if you treat somebody well, then the thing that's good within them will flourish. And if you treat somebody badly, the thing that's within them that's not good will will take over. So and I, it's so, it's so important to. Um, for human beings to 
really, really understand that. You know, with everything we do, the way we govern, the way we just cohabitate. You know, the, the planet's getting kind of crowded right now, and uh, I think it's really important for, for people to not lose sight of the fact that each one of us is an individual. And uh, you can't just kind of lump people into categories in your mind. And I think Gollum is a great lesson in that. You know, I mean, you can you can look at a hundred thousand orcs on the march, and you're not going to be like, oh, orc number three hundred and fifty-two has his own soul. You know, like there's other things going on. But but with Gollum, that greed that 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 he's held on to for all those years in the, in the caves. You know, but there's still something left. I mean, the way they depicted him, kind of cradling like a like a fetus, and he was going down. I don't know. So, some good shit. <laughs> yeah, I think it's also pretty heartbreaking to see him. You know, in that state, when you know yeah. what he was before and how those changes happened. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I was also wondering, too, Sean, how you felt um, when you heard about the new The Hobbit movies when that came out? Because I know the fans. Well, I said. I said that it would be they would do it, and for for um, years this idea was oh no that New Line owns the rights, like the theatrical rights or the domestic rights or something, and one of the other companies owned the international. I, whatever it was, there was some financial reason that it wouldn't happen, and I always said from 2001 that that was ridiculous. That of course, the, you know. It's going to make a billion dollars, and surely a company would rather split a billion dollars than have zero dollars, like just from a financial perspective. And then, you know, I know Guillermo put a lot of heart and soul into writing the screenplay of Guillermo del Toro, but I always felt like Peter would be the, the most appropriate person to do it. And so, yeah, so I felt like I felt like it had to happen. You know, I felt like it was supposed to happen. I, I had talked to Peter during the filming about. Uh, the book, and I was like, are you going to direct it? He said, no, no. He says, there's not enough story in The Hobbit for a full movie. Three movies. Three movies, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I thought, I was interested to see how they did it. And I appreciated that they tried to tonally, I guess Tolkien went back after the success of Lord of the Rings and made some adjustments with The Hobbit to try and get it to fit together with Lord of the Rings. You know, it was you know, it's a children's story. So uh, I appreciated that they tried to do that. I I kind of missed the tone of the books. Oh, they, when the when the uh, dwarves are throwing the plates mm -hmm. and singing and stuff, yeah. that made me feel like I felt when I was reading the books. But uh, but so and and you know, like I loved Cumberbatch as the dragon. I thought when they got it, when Smaug got in there, mm -hmm. that was really good. I loved the the girl um, in the second movie, mm -hmm. uh, the she elf. Mm -hmm. Badass she yes. she was great. Um, but there was other stuff that I was like, it, was, it dragged for me a little bit. So, but I'm glad they're there. I wanted to see more of Martin Freeman. I know. You know, and they like, he's this brilliant actor and he's the best Bilbo you could ever imagine. He's you brilliant. know? Yeah, but he didn't get to do enough. <laughs> like, I want to hear him talk more. So, what are you going to do? Yeah, thank you so much for your time today. Yeah. I know you have to run. But yeah, I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yay. So it wasn't too boring. No, of course not. <laughs>